cold and showery in the northeastern U.S. Across the rest of the country, fair skies. And I can attest to that. Last week, I was in Crestone, Colorado. That's out near Alamosa. Had some very delightful weather out there. There's a look at it from the drone. Certainly a much-needed break. That was the first vacation I've taken in three years. And what you see out there down to the south, that's the San Juan Valley. And that tends to be the coldest location in the U.S. in the lower 48 during the summer. And sometimes it works out that way in the wintertime. Anyway, let's head into the weather. Starting with the jet stream patterns, this is a typical positive PNA pattern. You've got the jet descending into the Midwest, troughing out east, and inclement weather along the east coast. You can see a 130 knot jet right there flowing up from northern Florida into the northeast. Kind of quiet out west. There's some weak ridging right there through the Four Corners area and a cutoff low off the California coast. To the north and to the northwest, an active Pacific weather pattern. Strong jet near the Aleutians and sharp troughing there south of Alaska. And we will have to watch for a transition coming up this weekend. We will flip that pattern to a negative PNA. What that means is we're going to see more troughing out in the western U.S. and a little bit more ridging out east. There's the surface chart early this afternoon. Significant cold air advection along the east coast. You can see those thickness lines just piled up there off the east coast. And if we go a little bit further to the east... We catch up with that cold front moving offshore. This high pressure area in northeastern Texas was associated with lots of cold air from Nebraska, Kansas, all the way down to Texas, and even eastward into Mississippi. We saw 30 degrees at Jackson, Mississippi, 29 at Greenville, and 30 at Greenwood. And temperatures were in the mid-20s across much of the central U.S. That's the coldest weather we've seen since early April. Heading out west, we do get into some of the more mild air. And heading up to Alaska, let's take a look. Yep, there is some fog in the Portland and Seattle area. But up in Alaska, under the influence of westerly flow coming in from the North Pacific, temperatures in the 20s and 30s up there in Alaska and Yukon, and winter is starting to get going up there in the Northwest Territories. Temperatures still fairly mild for this time of year, teens and 20s, but plenty of snow. And then moving into Quebec, there's our outgoing weather system. A series of 10,002 millibar lows around Quebec City, North Bay, and Moosonee. A little wedge of very warm, moist air into Nova Scotia. Temperatures up near 70. And look at that dew point, 64. That's a lot more moist than anywhere else in the U.S. Look at that. 20s dew points all the way down to Texas. And it's even more moist than Miami. That's pretty weird. But that's what you tend to get there in that warm sector. And no wonder they're getting abundant precipitation all the way up into Quebec. That's that warm conveyor belt action heading up north and interacting with the old occlusion. As we mentioned, the overnight lows, quite cold. Now, there will be a few errors here and there, such as at 75. Don't worry about that. But temperatures quite cold in Kansas, 19 there. I think it's going to be Manhattan, somewhere in that area. And widespread 20s all the way into northern Oklahoma, and then down south into Texas, near freezing, near the Dallas-Fort Worth area, around Sulphur Springs, 33 there, and then 30 at Idabel. And it's not just the central U.S. that got cold records all the way into the eastern U.S. Now, these are not observed temperatures. These are from the National Digital Forecast Database. So these may be one or two degrees off here and there, but you can see 30s all the way into Georgia. And forecast temperatures are going to be quite warm in California. We're going to be seeing 97 at Redding there, 94 at Ukiah, 85 at San Francisco, 
Yeah, that's pretty toasty there. And 70s all the way up into Oregon. Yeah, I really do like these charts. These show where all the interesting action is. For example, tomorrow morning, it's going to be pretty cold in the southeastern U.S., 33 at Atlanta, 29 at Huntsville, in 30s all the way into central Florida. Continuing the heat out west, 81 at uh, Mount Shasta, 79 at Burns. Those are going to break records, but this does reflect a moderating trend. So let's check out Friday. Well, the cold air scoots off the southeastern coast. Moderating weather in the western U.S., and we're just left with nothing. For Saturday, with southerly flow starting to set up in Texas, combination of onshore flow and downslope flow, that's going to spell record temperatures, 92 there at Childress, as we get that downslope flow off the Cap Rock. Sunday will be an interesting day across the central U.S. That onshore flow continues, strong warm air advection, also moisture coming up from the south with the development of a low-level jet. The dry line will set up in the Texas Panhandle, and we could see some very strong winds out here in the central plains, maybe some dust, possibly some fire danger, and it will be quite warm there. By Monday, with a combination of dynamics coming out of the Rockies with deeper moisture in East Texas and Eastern Oklahoma, we could see some severe weather start to get going. No record temperatures on Tuesday. However, with that system heading east, we're going to see some severe weather throughout the southeastern U.S. And we can show that coming together. This is the current map using the GFS model dry across the central U.S., and the moisture just pushed out into the southern Gulf of Mexico. Anyway, things do change over time, and as we go into later in the week, we start developing that southerly flow in Texas by Thursday evening. Dew points only in the 40s in Texas, but you can see a wedge of that coming up into Dallas, Texarkana, Little Rock, and Shreveport. And this bluish color that you see here, these are going to be 60s dew points. That's starting to get up into what we need for convective weather. 70s is perfect. And let's see if we get that. The purple is going to be the 70s dew points starting to come on shore there around Victoria later on Sunday. That dry line will be set up from, looks like, around Omaha to Pratt, Kansas to Amarillo. And going into Monday, that's going to be our first significant severe weather day. 70s making its way up into Texas. Some evidence of a mesolow right there in the Red River Valley that could back the winds in parts of northeast Texas, Greenville, up into Broken Bow. And by afternoon, we're going to be looking about like this. Again, this is 132 hours out, so things are certainly sub subject to change. However, at this point, some evidence of a cold pool already setting up, so this could be a little bit in the realm of a squall line. Let me back this up a couple of hours and look at the inflow. We'll take a sample around Longview and check out what the storms are going to be ingesting. And there you go. Definitely not a loaded gun, so that's good from a severe weather standpoint, but some rather strong low-level jet winds up to 40 knots. So we're going to have kind of a marginal severe weather risk. It's We will have the wind shear to support severe weather, but with numerous cell competition, that's going to squash the severe weather potential just a little bit. And you can even see what looks like a little bit of a cape robber up there at 500 millibars. Now, we don't want to just take one sample. Let's take a look further into the inflow around College Station around midday on Monday. Kind of a weak loaded gun right there, but that's offset by significant warm air aloft. Some of that could be anvil material, but you can see the capes are running pretty low. And if that's already anvil material at 18Z, maybe we have a squall line already starting to get going across Texas. So we shall see how that works out. For Tuesday, things shift eastward into Alabama and Georgia. Let's take a look in that same inflow area. 
Well, obviously, a highly shared environment, bulk shares, pretty impressive. But the thermodynamics, really, nothing to write home about. Capes barely in the 100 range. So, I don't know. Yeah, nothing here seems to be screaming severe weather. So let's do that quick run through of the charts, the occlusion and the frontal system moving out into the Atlantic, affecting mostly Quebec by later tonight. And let's go into the weekend. You can see that strong downslope setting up. So that's going to mean a warm up in the central U.S. However, there is a bear clinic zone up in the northwestern U.S., warm front across South Dakota, westward as a cold front into Idaho and Oregon. So up to the north, this is going to be maritime polar air poised to come southeast. So it will be unsettled in the northern Rockies, Idaho, Utah. You can see a mix of rain and snow. Elsewhere around the country, mild and not much going on. A little disturbance off of North Carolina. That'll make its way up into Connecticut, Massachusetts by Sunday. And in Texas, the strong, deep, warm air advection, moist advection continuing. And we'll see that dry line starting to set up maybe in this area right here. Northwest of this frontal system, you can see that coming together. Cold front drops into Albuquerque and Phoenix and warm front arcing back up into Minnesota. Back behind that, a definite Anna front set up with extensive rain and snow bands all the way up into Montana and North Dakota. And here's what we mean with anafront versus catafront. This diagram is about 70 years old, but it certainly is relevant. And what we see here is rising motion along and behind the cold front. And you can see the thickness lines tend to be fairly parallel to the frontal boundary. And we end up getting most of our precip kind of like back in this area. With a catafront, most of that precip is along and ahead of the boundary and tends to be convective in nature. Most of that precipitation will head right up into North and South Dakota. Further down to the South, with that strong warm air advection, we will be looking at convective weather. Capes are not very impressive, but this will be a rather uncapped air mass. So as you can see, the model breaks out numerous cells. So again, that's subject to change. Who knows, we may pull up more moisture. We'll just have to check things out on Friday. Anyway, it looks like a winter storm up there for Manitoba going into midweek. We will see the weather system down south moving eastward into Alabama and Georgia. And looks like not very much aerial coverage on that thunderstorm activity. If we get back into that cold air advection pattern in the Midwest and central U.S. for midweek. And another system from the northwestern U.S. starting to make an appearance. That's probably about as much as we want to cover for next week. But as far as today goes, not much weather, but some beautiful landscapes there on the GO satellite imagery. Looking quite nice in California and Nevada. Some wildfire smoke showing up there around Salem. In the northwestern U.S., the fog and stratus appears to have burned off but some evidence of wildfire smoke. In the Midwest, a mid-level weather system moving southeastward. And there it is. We can see it on the heights and vorticity chart. Bring that up to the current time, and that's going to be it right there. Short wave moving through Iowa. And we get close to that main upper level low spinning around Ottawa. And strongly cyclonic flow across the northeastern U.S., cold air advection. So quite a few processes helping to get that stratocumulus and altocumulus going. And that's all for this edition of Forecast Lab. I will leave you with some footage of Colorado. So enjoy, and we'll see you back here on Friday. Take care. Bye-bye.